Hello, this is a compilation video of small snippets of videos that I've shot over the last three to four years. It's to give you a heads up on polycarbonate greenhouses. This is my polycarbonate greenhouse critique. I think I'm qualified to do one. I bought it, I built it, and I've grown tomatoes in it and cucumbers in it for the last three years. I think I'm in a position to critique a polycarbonate greenhouse. But I will say at this point, this is a budget polycarbonate greenhouse. And I say that because I've had lots of correspondences over the years that tell me you only get what you pay for. Yeah, well I didn't need to be told that. I know that. But what I'll tell you is, and you don't need to be told this either, you can only purchase what you can afford. If we're in a cost of living crisis, and the pennies are tight, you're not buying a top of the range greenhouse. If you're just about to become a pensioner, you're just about to take up gardening, I don't think you're going to want to be spending too much on your new polycarbonate greenhouse are you? Can you even afford it? So yeah, so this is a critique of my budget range polycarbonate greenhouse. I can't speak for the more expensive models, but what I would advise you to do is this, after you've watched this video, and after you've perhaps uh, transferred to other videos that I've made, search on the make of greenhouse that you intend to purchase. Search YouTube on that. You will find some videos of that greenhouse being built and perhaps even maintained over the years. If the build video is produced by the maker or a seller of that particular brand of greenhouse, then they're going to want you to buy that greenhouse. So that's going to be a pretty slick operation. I would avoid those videos. Go for a video of the greenhouse being built by a gardener, someone like you and me, someone that probably hasn't built a greenhouse before. And there you're likely to get a true representation of what it takes to build one of these greenhouses. Okay, I'm going to cut you to some demographics now and show you um, the sorts of people that would watch this video and that I aim the content towards. Watch that, then come back to me. Thirty five point four per cent of views are from the United States. Twenty five per cent of views come from the United Kingdom. Five point seven per cent of views come from Canada. 4.2% of views come from India, 
and 3.5% of views come from Australia and on and on and on. So you can see from these statistics that the bulk of the views coming to this channel are from the United States followed by the United Kingdom. 48.4% of viewers are female, 51.6% of viewers are male. I would say that's 50-50 wouldn't you, it's half and half. Yeah, it's half and half. Now then let's go down this list. Users specified, 0%. I have no idea what that means. No idea at all. 13 to 17 year olds, 0.3%. 18 to 24 year olds, 4.5%. Well, hey, let's face it, when you were in that age bracket, you weren't interested in gardening, were you? I wasn't. They're not. No, oh, right, so 25 to 34 year olds, 14.9%. 35 to 44 year olds, 17.3%. 45 to 54 year olds, 18.8%. 55 to 64 year olds, 21.8%. And 65 year old plus, 22.5%. Yep, we're a bunch of oldies, aren't we? It's a silver surfer channel, if we look at these statistics, but you would expect that, wouldn't you? I mean, when you're much younger, much healthier, much fitter, there's a lot more to life than gardening. But as you get older and start to slow down, perhaps even have a bit more leisure time on your hands, yeah, it's gardening. It's a natural. It's gardening. Uh, and so when I um, put these videos out there, I'm conscious that the majority of the viewers are older viewers, if I can use that expression. They're an older viewer. I have an older audience. And there are certain things that, that older people can do and can't do, and I take that into account as I produce videos. If I'm going to ask you to lift something, I'm not going to ask you to lift something that's too heavy. If it's too heavy for me, it's too heavy for you. If I'm going to suggest you might want to purchase something, I'm also aware that there's a cost of living crisis out there. And as most of my viewers are either pensioners or bordering on being pensioners, then there's probably a limited budget out there to buy anything. So we won't be purchasing anything that's top of the range. We will not, because we can't afford it. And we won't be trying to lift anything that's too heavy for us. Will we? Okay, so as you can see from uh, the uh, channel demographics, the majority of people watching these videos that I'm making are older people, pensioners, or moving up to pension age. <laughs> you wouldn't be doing this if you were a teenager, would you? You would not. Okay, so, that's the type of people this video would be aimed at um, and trying to help as much as I can uh, in my advice. And I think I'm in a position to do this critique. You know, I bought it, I built it, I've grown in it for just over three years. Right, before we go to those uh, snippets, let me just tell you what you can expect if you do check out the videos that will be in the link in the text below this video. Now you may see unboxing videos. I didn't do an unboxing video. I've got to tell you, it would have been far too stressful. <laughs> far too stressful. The alarm bell should have rang when the boxes arrived. This was an 8 foot by 6 foot greenhouse. There wasn't any boxes in that delivery over 6 foot long. Greenhouse was 8 foot long. 
At that point, I thought perhaps to two stage delivery, some packages today, some packages tomorrow. I was wrong. Everything I needed in a million pieces was in those boxes. Hey, you won't believe it. You won't believe it. There's a video there that you definitely need to watch. And it's a, it's a reconstruction because, as I said, I didn't video the actual unboxing, but I've done a, do a simulation. I've done a simulation. You need to watch that video. I can laugh now, it's funny now, thinking back. But boy, it was stressful at the time. We're in the greenhouse today. It's really windy outside. Uh, reminds me of some of the ex experiences I had with this greenhouse through the past 12 months. I've had it nearly two years now. Uh, and at times it's been a struggle to hang on to it, to be honest. So this is a, an 8x6 aluminium framed polycarbonate sheet greenhouse. 8x6. And when I built this greenhouse, that's probably when I should have recorded this video. But to be honest, there was so much stress involved in the building of that greenhouse, there was no way I could have shot any film. There just wasn't. It was horrendous. It was a nightmare, in fact. It was a nightmare. Um, so I can't do an unboxing because the greenhouse is built now, but I can tell you about the unboxing. And, um, yeah, I can tell you about the unboxing. Um, and the surprises I got when I unboxed. And what that led to. Okay, so I've already told you um, it's an 8x6 aluminium greenhouse and it's uh, polycarbonate sheets. Okay. Got these props from the homegrown veg prop store. These are just some pieces of rocket stick, and I hope I can explain this well now because, as I've said, the unboxing was two years ago. Um, but this should do the trick, and this will leave you gobsmacked because it left me gobsmacked, I'll tell you that. Right. That's the base of the greenhouse. 8 foot, 8 foot, 6 foot, 6 foot. Okay, bolt it together. And then we have the side walls, don't we? Like so. And on top of the side walls, 8 foot by 8 foot. Hope you're with me on this. And then at the apex of the roof, another length, another unit, 8 foot long. Okay. So, when we unbox the greenhouse, we have two boxes from memory. We have a long flat pack box that has all the polycarbonate sheets in. And we have a long thin box that has all these members in. And all the other struts and braces uh, that come with the greenhouse. And the nuts and bolts. Okay, so we empty the box out that contains all these struts. Okay, and we sort them out into lengths and, and, and we get everything and we look at the manuals and blah blah blah. And I'm looking, I'm looking for these eight foot members. And I can't find anything in the box that's eight foot long. I can find these six foot members, but I can't find these eight foot members. So I'll go and have a look at the uh, the instructions. Oh, let me show <laughs> let me show you this. Give me strength, and I'm telling you, that's a pun, and it's deliberate. Give me strength. And how stressful was it? How long does it take to build one of these things? Well, the instructions are there. It doesn't take that long. You watch other people doing it. Yeah, they're knocking off in a 20-minute video, don't they? Maybe the professionals do. Maybe there's someone out in the camera shop handing them the bits that they need next. That won't be you. 
you'll be grubbing about on your hands and knees looking for stuff, just like I was. And what happened was, we decided that we would have breakfast first, that I would take my dog Molly for a walk, when I got back, we'd start and build the greenhouse, which we did. That was me and my wife. Do you know when we finished? Starting just after breakfast, just before supper, in the dark, in the wind, in the rain. The weather changed, we lost the light. Did I stop building? Couldn't. Why not? Because these greenhouses are so flimsy that they'll collapse if they're not fully constructed in a woman, if you're building them outdoors. The wind will just take them away. They're at the strongest, and um, well, strongest isn't the description I would use for these greenhouses. They're at the strongest when they're fully built. They're at the weakest when they're only part built. So once you start building, you ain't stopping. No, you are not stopping. It's a start to finish job, this. We started in the daylight, and we finished in the dark, and we were working just below the kitchen window and using the light from the kitchen to see what we were doing. Stressful? You better be a bit. So that was the build. So we got it built. Have a look at that uh, simulated build video. Um, and then shortly afterwards, we get a range of storms coming through. So we've got some big winds. And when are you going to lose your greenhouse? In a storm. And when's that storm likely to be? In the middle of the night. And what's going to accompany the storm? Big winds, lots of rain and darkness. Yeah, that's when your greenhouse is going to fall to bits. That's when mine started to come apart at the seams. Literally come apart at the seams. Boy, that was stressful. Anyway, we saved the greenhouse. We saved the greenhouse, we didn't lose it. And the next day, I had to look at strengthening this thing. I had to look, I mean, it was flexing all over the place. I had to look at strengthening this thing. Um, so let me show you this. So we get the greenhouse beefed up, and yeah, I've had three, three or so good seasons in it. But you've got to keep on top of it, because what happens is, these greenhouses do flex. The panels flex. So every day you're going to lose them, so you need to keep an eye on those, that they're not, the nuts and bolts aren't becoming slack, and you're going to lose a panel. So there's, there's maintenance to do at the end of every year. And I do it.
these strips that you've seen around the greenhouse these are edging strips for tiles so if you've got a tile kitchen where there's an exposed edge you'll have something like this an edging strip it's light aluminium these are gold uh, the reason I got these uh, gold edging strips was because they were just about giving them away because apparently gold isn't in fashion anymore so I, th I can't recall what I paid for these it was next to nothing <laughs> mind you it nearly got me it nearly got me um, a criminal record but that's another story and I've done that on another video <laughs> but uh, yeah so what I found was these these sheets that are captivated by the uh, greenhouse members they want to flex in high winds and they flex in and they flex out and if the uprights were to part slightly in other words if the nuts and bolts weren't tight these could flop out they could flip out and then we are in trouble so I put these extra strengtheners on okay and my understanding was that the wind would be blowing outside the greenhouse and trying to blow these in, blow the panels in. But what I actually found from being in the greenhouse on a stormy day, that not only does it want to blow them in, <laughs> it wants to suck them out. It wants to take them that way as well. So, stop the panels blowing in. You can see that. But they're not actually secured to the panel so if the panel wants to blow in that direction if the wind wants to suck it out these are not going to provide any strengthening are they and my first thought was well yeah pop a few walls in here some nuts and bolts some fixings that should do the job but I thought this greenhouse is weak enough to start with it's, it's not the strongest of greenhouses and I didn't want to weaken these sheets anymore by drilling holes in them. So what I've actually done is, I put... Let me just show you this. Let me, I hope I can get this up a bit closer. This is how thick the material this strut is. That's all in my greenhouse together. That's a matchstick next to it. Can you see that? I hope you can. It's not as thick as a matchstick. It's not as thick as a matchstick. Blimey, how thin is that? So what is it as thick as? <laughs> Carrot seeds, okay. Packet's already opened and I always secure the packet again if I don't use all the seeds with a paper clip. Hey look at this. This is absolutely ridiculous. I mean it is. It's ridiculous. Have you got it again? Paper clip. Let me straighten it out. Let me straighten this paper clip out. And you'll see it better. Right, are we ready for this? It's the same thickness as a paper clip. <laughs> it's this. When they described this greenhouse as being lightweight, that was an understatement, wasn't it? Some of these members are only as thick as a paper clip. In fact, I would go so far as to say the paint on this member is thicker than the aluminium that it's made of. There's more paint than aluminium. Oh,
There is some footage of me in the greenhouse in a storm. If you're of a nervous disposition, you don't want to pull a cabin of greenhouse. This was in the daylight hours. I could see what I was doing. Imagine this in the middle of the night. You're in bed. You can hear the noise. You have a look outside. You might be losing your greenhouse. Well, this is scary. Hey, watch the video. Okay, let's summarise what we've just read. This is my interpretation. This greenhouse will not withstand a storm unless you build it close to your house or a big wall or a big fence, preferably all three, but better still, build it inside a shed. It's up to you to secure your greenhouse so that it can't blow away. If your greenhouse does blow down or bits fly off it and cause damage to adjacent buildings, property or people, eh, it's your fault. If the greenhouse collapses under the weight of snow, it's your fault for not cleaning the snow off the roof. It could be worse. You could be in it. <laughs> Don't work on the greenhouse in extreme cold and don't have a barbecue in it. In strong wind, close the door and the windows, then go inside. In strong winds, close the door and open the... In strong winds, close the door and the window, then go indoors and hope for the best. Your warranty cover your warranty cover excludes everything. If you strengthen or modify your greenhouse, you can kiss goodbye to any warranty you thought you had. Well, that's me banjaxed. That's me banjaxed. And since any damage would be your fault and not covered by a warranty, you may want to have your greenhouse on your home contents insurance. Well, there you have it. There you have it.
I'll also show you um, a new support system that I installed this year. It's basically bamboos and strings. So you're looking at the underside of the greenhouse roof now and what I've done is I've secured a bamboo the full length of the greenhouse roof. I've secured it to the underside of the roof and off that bamboo I've hung these strings one for each of the tomatoes. So we're going to be going, growing so we're going to be growing up strings this year. I did it last year and it worked and I've given it another go. And there's still a lot of work to be done in here. I still have quite a bit of work to do with these tomato plants. Uh, but on the other side of the greenhouse I've got three that are in their stations uh, and the strings are in place. So just when you think nothing else could go wrong, something does go wrong. Big start. I'm looking at the shoots in the roof and this is after three years and they're peppered, and I mean peppered, with holes. I have four shoots to replace. They're disintegrating. The sun is actually eating the polycarbonate treats in the roof. These are the two damaged sheets. This one is damaged the whole way up, right to the top. There are holes from bottom to top that I'm not proposing to replace these two sheets. What I'm going to do is repair them with some clear tape. Now these polycarbonate sheets are supposed to be UV protected. They're only UV protected on one side. If you put them in the right way, they've got protection. If you put them in the wrong way, they haven't got protection. And there is an easy chance that you'll get some of these in the wrong way because as you build this greenhouse, I'll tell you now, and I'm speaking from experience, It'll be sheets in, sheets out, sheets in, sheets out, because you will be making mistakes. And in that interaction of sheets in, sheets out, they'll be in the right way to start with, but you may finish up the build with them in the wrong way. Now, would it not be simple for these sheets to have UV protection on both sides? Then it would be impossible to put them in the wrong way. Could that be done? Would it increase the cost of the sheet? Well, I'm having to replace four of them after three years, and I know now that the sheets on the other side of the roof, they're starting to get fragile. Having replaced four damaged sheets on the other side of the roof, I now find that I've got sheets on this side of the roof that are also damaged by ultraviolet. This sheet I'm going to repair the holes just using tape. Now let's move to this adjacent sheet. This sheet also has holes in it. And they go right to the top of the sheet. But I'm going to repair but I'm going to repair those holes just using clear.
clear tape as well. I'm not replacing these sheets, not yet anyway. I've actually bought some tape, some clear tape to put on those just to try and extend their life. Hey, watch that video, see what you make of that. I'll show you about that expression necessity is the mother of invention. Let me show you this. But before I do that, um, by now I had videos up and I had uh, people watching those videos giving me suggestions of how to strengthen this greenhouse up. Okay, quite a few suggested I needed some screws, others would say nuts and bolts, drill the sheets, drill the greenhouse. Ha ha ha! You've got to be kidding! I mean, this greenhouse and these sheets are so flimsy, there is no way I would be drilling holes anywhere in that greenhouse, in that frame, in those sheets. It wasn't going to happen. That would weaken it, wouldn't it? So, anyway, necessity the mother of invention. Let me show you this. I don't know how we'll get this on uh, there. You see that? Any idea what it is? It's an aluminium edging strip that you would use if you want to tile a kitchen. Recognise it? So, when I was looking to strengthen up this, um, this greenhouse, uh, we had some pieces of this, not much, just short lengths because we'd had a kitchen done a number of years ago and um, I had the off cut. And I looked at that and I thought, wow, this has got holes all the way along its length. I could perhaps utilise those holes. If those holes would line up with the existing frame of the greenhouse, I'm just slipping a nut and bolt through there and tightening up. Yeah, I need to have a look at some of this stuff. So, what I did was, I um, went on the internet to look for it. And hey, would you believe it? It comes in eight foot lengths. <laughs> eight foot lengths. The greenhouse is eight foot long. It comes in eight foot lengths. But what I didn't like was the price. Well, it was expensive for what you got. And I was going to need a few lengths of this. There, nevertheless, I go look for some. I go to the nearest town, check it out. Uh, so I went to a, a kitchen showroom, a local kitchen showroom, uh, and an assistant asked me what I was after, and I explained it. I said, "Look, I'm wanting some tile edging. I'm not bothered what shape it is, what colour it is, what style it is." But if it's eight foot long and it's cheap, I want to buy some lengths because I want to use it in a little uh, DIY project I've got on the go. Oh, come with me, he said. So he showed me a rack full of tile edging, a rack full of it. He said, all that's on sale. It's tile edging we can't move, it's gone out of fashion. People don't want it anymore. Ha <laughs> ha. And that's where the gold bars came in. You'll see these gold bars often in my greenhouse, because that's what's holding it together. Gold bars. So there was these lengths of gold tile edging. And I said, I think I could, I could use that stuff. That would do a job. I'll tell you now, if you haven't seen my videos, you'll never guess how much I paid for it. For an eight foot length of tile edging, you will never guess. Remember, this is tile edging that nobody else wants. It's on the sale rack. It was gold. Apparently people were now into um, silver and black. 
and other colours, but, but not gold. And so he had a rack with lots of gold tile edging on that he wanted rid of. And I felt, yes, that'll do me, mate. So I came out of there with a, a slack handful of lengths of um, gold tile edging. And came home. Oh, you need to watch that video. But also, <laughs> we move on, it's never ending. I mean, I must have shot six videos on this subject. So get that tile edging on, and it works a treat. Minimum amount of work, minimum cost, and it fits. But I haven't got enough. So I'm going back to get some more a few days later. Now then, in my haste, I break the law. Yeah. We're going to get the cops calling at home grown veg, I break the law. Boy, you've got to watch that video. So I've, so I've nearly got myself a criminal record over this polycarbonate greenhouse. There's a link to that video in the text below. Watch it, it's funny. It was funny at the time. I thought I was going to get my collar felt by the cops. But I didn't. But then watch that video. Okay, so that forms part of the critique uh, of a polycarbonate greenhouse, my polycarbonate greenhouse, a budget polycarbonate greenhouse. Um, I'm not too sure if you'd have these same problems if you were buying a top of the range greenhouse. You need to look at other people's videos for that. But if you're buying a budget polycarbonate greenhouse, chances are you're going to have the issues that I've had. So those are my thoughts on polycarbonate greenhouses. You've told me yours over the years, but they tell me them again, and whatever you do, if you're going to get one, research the particular model you're getting, and make sure you're researching it through other gardeners. Because what you might find, and this is what I found, and this was a big mistake that I made, I didn't review polycarbonate greenhouses. I've never had one, I've had a glass greenhouse, never had polycarbonate, I would try one. Big mistake. If I'd reviewed these greenhouses, I wouldn't have bought one. Not a budget greenhouse anyway. And if I'd looked at the more expensive ones, I probably wouldn't have bought one of those either because I couldn't afford it. Simple as. Okay, so before I wind this video up, I would remind you there are a number of videos that I've produced over those three years, honest videos that I've produced over the years that I'll link in the text below. And one, one other thing before, before I go. <laughs> when, you do, when you do search your greenhouse on YouTube, look at the date that video was posted. Now, if that video was posted two or three years ago, chances are there are an update. Now, I've done this since I built my video. I should have done it. I've done this since I built my greenhouse. I should have done it before I built the greenhouse, but I didn't. What you find is that quite a few of these greenhouses that were built two or three years ago don't exist anymore. They don't exist because they blew away. <laughs> yeah, the shoots are down the road, they're in the next door's garden. They're up a tree somewhere. It's fell to bits. You will find that. And one other thing that you, you may want to consider is that um, the wind will want to lift this greenhouse off its foundations. It, it just will. So you need it to be well anchored. That's another expense you need to factor in. Otherwise, in the next big wind, it'll be in next door's garden. So you need to factor that in. You will need a fairly substantial base to hold this thing down. But at the outset, 
yeah, things are looking good. We've built the grain out, so we're up and running. We'll be growing fruit in that this year. Three years later, they ain't got a grain out. I've got mine because I put a lot of work into it, just trying to hold it together. It's still there. Okay, watch the videos in the links below, and this should give you a more informed view of budget range polycarbonate greenhouses. Hope you've enjoyed this video. This is Home Grown Veg. Sally out.